I don't have another smaller snap clamp, so what I'm going to do is take a piece of plastic and use it as a spacer and put the clamp over the top of it, and then I can clamp down uh, tighter around that piece of hose. One, two, three, four. much tighter and see I've got that piece in it that acts as a spacer. So it's much tighter, it won't slip off there. With my pump clamp modification completed, I can now connect it to the spray rod. Now we need to take and slip the tubing over the barbed end. I should put a clamp here and I'll go out and get one, but the barb will definitely help hold that. So I've got the discharge tubing of the pump secured to the spray rod now. And there also happens to be this union fitting here at the end, which is how I'll end up taking the spray rod out. I'm gonna disassemble it now so I can work on just this portion. By placing the submersible pump end in first, I can now connect the union fitting to the opposing end of the fitting on the end of the spray rod. And by threading the two halves of the union fitting together, I can now prepare myself for the next step, which would be the water test. Well, I probably should have heeded my own advice. I somehow ended up cutting the tubing just a little bit too short. Now the whole pump kind of hangs, dangling, and it's causing the spray rod to uh, rise and that uh, could be a problem so now I gotta find something to prop up the bottom of that pump duck on it well I guess the real answer is to go buy a new piece of tubing um, for the moment it's propped up on a little rock and such down there and that was kind of a error on my part but <clears throat> one that's easily resolved and of course as the motto of the show goes keep moving forward so I'll replace that and get the rest of this installed. So I think we're just about ready to plug it in and see um, the water flow portion of the L2 scrubber from Turbo Aquatics. So I'm gonna reach in, turn the power on. And water's now being pumped up into the scrubber. Maybe we can take one of these panels off here. Kind of see inside there a bit. Actually, I think we can see a little bit better in from this side here. Be able to see a water level in there. It doesn't have a big gurgle gurgle. And you can see the water is flowing across the screen. Nothing's running out on the top. And you can kind of see water moving there on the inside. So the valve's in place to help deal with a bubble bubble, but I don't think we have a bubble bubble. So I think we're just about ready to start on the next part, which is the uh, lighting portion. Okay, so now I'm ready to slide the LED and heat sinks into place. down the thumb screw just a little bit on that side and slide this in on this side now we need to connect the two wires 
I do have to admit that at first I was intimidated by the fact that it was me doing the wiring of the lighting system. But as it turns out, it's pretty much plug and play. And I think we're ready to plug in the LED lights into the timer and see if we've got it hooked up properly. Hopefully there's no sparks or anything that fly. And let me take a moment to point out the biggest advantages of LED lighting. As opposed to fluorescent lighting, fluorescent requiring the bulbs to be changed out every three months due to their spectrum decline, LED lighting lasts considerably longer. Additionally, the colors emitted by the LED lights are specifically tuned to encourage the greatest amount of photosynthesis possible from the plants themselves. You can see the lights are on inside there. You can see the glow coming out of the unit. So the LED lights are currently working and I don't see any water running out of the unit. So I think we've got it installed. No big gurgle gurgle coming. So I think what I'll do is uh, go ahead and service the tank and then come back and check on this in just a little bit. Servicing this 90 gallon tank is very similar to its 60 gallon smaller version. I start by adding the new water to the system first by pouring it into the filter below. I then step up on the ladder and begin to wipe the algae from the inside of the tank. This tank too, and maybe more so due to its elevated position, has a much more obvious gravel and scuff line. As I mentioned, this was a reef tank previously. As with most reef tanks, there's a buildup of calcareous algae that occurs. It's taken me a number of years to chip most of that purple coralline algae growth away. It's now my intent to see if I can decrease the brown algae growth that occurs on the front panel weekly by using the algae scrubber to decrease the nutrients in this 10-year-old plus former reef tank. Next time you're near Long Beach, California, take the time to stop in at Age of Aquariums, 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Age of Aquariums carries a full line of dry goods, supplements, and exotic equipment. Age of Aquariums also carries a wide assortment of living corals, coral frags, as well as fresh and saltwater fish, ranging from the usual, the unusual, and the bizarre. Age of Aquariums is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, Long Beach, California, near Signal Hill. Open seven days a week. Call 562-438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz. For a limited time only, LA Fish Guys t-shirts are back. Whether it's gear for cleaning your own aquarium or one-upsmanship with your friends, these quality Hanes BVTs are 100% pre-strung cotton. My three color LA Fish Guys logos are silk screened onto the back and front chest area of the shirts. Three sizes, medium, large, and extra large. Go to LAFishGuys.com and click on the t-shirt link to order your LA Fish Guys t-shirts today. I've just finished wiping off the algae inside the tank and I'm now ready to vacuum the sand. As with the other tank, 
I'm not trying to create a live sand bed. My intent is to remove the settled debris from the bottom of the tank. What I would like to do is remove or move the rock with inside this tank so I could address the debris that have settled there underneath that rock for the last 10 plus years. But that's another project and I need to concentrate on this project which is installing the algae scrubber and making sure it operates properly. With the sand bed vacuumed and the filter's water level brought down to the proper running water level point, I'm now ready to remove the collection cup from the protein skimmer so I can clean it in the buckets of water I just took from the tank. And with the addition of the algae scrubber, it's interesting that the protein skimmer will decrease significantly in what it drives out. That's due to the algae scrubber consuming majority of the proteins in the water. And so with the skimmer cleaned and the top and the lid of the tank wiped clean, I can now begin to clean the front of the tank. Okay, so the tank has been serviced. The L2 algae scrubber has been installed. The heat sinks are in place. The lights are on. The water pump is pumping water into the unit. There is no gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Um, protein skimmer cup has been cleaned. Um, I think what we'll do is allow this to run for the week as it is. So next week when I come here, I'm gonna test for nitrate and phosphate so we have a starting point. And then we'll kind of uh, gauge our um, success or progress from there. Reality is, I mean, again, I've got a brown coating on the glass and some green algae on the rocks, but nothing of real uh, significance. So I think the best test is gonna end up being what the uh, nitrates and phosphates start out at and what they end up at. And so join us again for part four as we test the aquarium water for nitrate and phosphate and define our starting point on the effectiveness of the L2 LED algae scrubber.